When the President of the United States says this, and I love people who say, the blood of liberty, or excuse me, the, excuse me, the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. Well, guess what, man? I didn't see a whole lot of patriots that are out there walking around making sure that we have these weapons. Well, and if you really want to worry about the government, you need an F-16. And the room that's literally filled with the government starts laughing like this. You need an F-16. You don't need an AR-15. No, I'm not. No, I'm serious. You think about it. I, I'm not joking. Because that's one of the arguments made by right that we need to be able to protect ourselves against the government. Well, look. <laughs> that should tell you everything you need to know about why the Second Amendment is so important. As old and senile as Joe Biden is. What do you think I am? Some old senile hermit who lives in a shack and craps her pants. He's a gift to the people because he frequently says the quiet parts out loud. And as a result, he ends up giving the people a clear view of not only these politicians' ignorance and many times sheer stupidity, but also their unbelievably smug and dictatorial elitism. But you have to be willing to pay attention. So come along as I do a two-way breakdown on the speech Joe Biden gave at the U.S. Conference of Mayors winter meeting. To coordinate these efforts and create the first ever White House, I, we, what we did, my staff came along and said, you know, we need a White House office dedicated to getting, getting guns off the street and threatening and treating the trauma from gun violence, because there's a lot of trauma. So in short, you created a White House office to attack a constitutional right. Because I don't see a White House office to take cars off the streets, even though every day 37 people in the United States die in drunk driving accidents. And I don't think there should be such an office because banning a vital yet lifeless tool because of human actions is stupid, especially when that tool saves more lives than it takes and it's not even close. Man, it's, it's not even close, really. I mean, it's not even close. In 2021, there were 20,958 murders committed with a gun. But guns are used defensively by firearm owners in approximately 1.67 million incidents per year. But no, let's create a White House office to ban the thing that saves millions of lives. Sounds pretty smart to me, huh? Big dummy. Some of you may remember a woman named Diane Feinstein and Joe Biden passed the first assault weapons ban back when I was in the Senate. The mass shootings actually went down. So I'm still committed to banning assault weapons in high capacity magazines. We've done it before and we can do it again. I want you to keep in mind that this is the woman Joe Biden is praising. She says she got the best she could. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. This woman not only wanted to ban semi-auto guns, she wanted to have them confiscated. And this is who Joe Biden is praising. These people will tell you they support the second amendment, but they just want common sense gun measures, like banning and confiscating the type of gun used in most self-defense shootings. And him saying that after they passed the 94 assault weapon ban, mass shootings went down is disingenuous because according to a journal article written by a professor at Northeastern University who collected data back to 1982 from 1976 to 1994, about 18 mass shootings occurred each year. During the ban, 1995 to 2004, there were about 19 incidents per year. After the ban through 2011, the average went up to nearly 21. That's literally the opposite of what happened, Joe. Now, if you factor in the increase after the ban expired, it went up a whole two more incidents. Not to mention, assault weapons are not as commonplace in mass shootings as some gun control advocates believe. Fox wrote in a 2013 article in the journal Homicide Studies, instead, semi-automatic handguns, 47.9%, are far more prevalent in random massacres than firearms that would typically be classified as assault weapons. Joe Biden and gang know this though, but their goal is to start with assault weapons because their appearance and the lack of knowledge on such guns by the masses makes banning them an easier first step to the ultimate goal of banning all guns outright. What do you think their next suggestion would be when there's a mass shooting, but it happens with a handgun? They'll start talking about banning those too. We've seen this thing play out in other countries like Australia and the UK. Anti-gun politicians like Biden have all but said that what those countries did is their model. 
We have to pass universal background checks. It doesn't violate the Second Amendment, for God's sake. I used to teach the Constitution at, at the University of Pennsylvania. We, we have background checks, but what Biden is talking about is universal background checks. And for reasons that I've explained in this video, he started off with, okay, we just need to have background checks for people to the, the guns so we know who has the guns and what well, well, gets the background checks and that they're supposed to have the guns, so forth and so on. Then said, after nothing changed, well, there's still crime, there's still violence, so therefore we need a registration. Then from there, started confiscating guns, period. You can't enforce a universal background check without a national gun registry. And though that may not violate the Second Amendment, the Supreme Court in 1968 ruled that a gun registry violates the Fifth Amendment. In the Supreme Court case, Haynes v. United States, the Supreme Court ruled that requiring registration by those who unlawfully possess firearms amounts to a violation of the Fifth Amendment's prescription against forced self-incrimination. The court said that if someone realistically can expect that registration will substantially increase the likelihood of his prosecution, the registration requirement, it's unconscionable, not to mention unconstitutional. Just saying. Well, actually, they said it. You know, when, the, when, when, when the, we passed the Second Amendment, guess what? You weren't allowed to have a cannon. You, no, I'm serious. Not a joke. You weren't allowed to have certain. You weren't. There were certain limitations of what you could have. And I love my friends. And I come in the southern part of my state is very conservative. The Delmarva Peninsula. We talk at you like you all talk sometimes. You know what I mean? But all kidding aside, it's, it's just kind of amazing. They think that you could order, you could have anything. That, that never was the case. Biden has been repeating this lie for years and he keeps saying it. You absolutely could own a cannon when the Second Amendment was written. It's not even a question. This lie is so bad, even PolitiFact had to fact check Biden on a stupid claim. What type of weapon you could own? You couldn't buy a cannon. Is that so? It's time for the truth meter Minute. We reached out to historians and experts who've studied the history of the Second Amendment. They told us there weren't really federal gun laws until the beginning of the 20th century. There were local laws limiting guns before that, but they weren't aimed at criminals. A 1792 Virginia law banned black people, whether they were free or enslaved, from owning guns. Other laws targeted Native Americans. Those laws were aimed at social control, not crime prevention. What about owning your own cannon? There was no law banning cannon owners at the time that the Bill of Rights was passed. We know from historical documents that privateers set sail in the 1800s with their own private cannons. And the claim that people couldn't own a cannon, that rate's false. Yet and still he keeps lying about this and the idiot gallery in the room keeps laughing in agreement with this idiocy. The movie Idiocracy was supposed to be just that. As Joe and Rita lay dormant, the years passed and mankind became stupider at a frightening rate. A movie. Now it's a damn documentary. There have always been limitations on what you could purchase. So anyway, look, and I love people who say, the blood of liberty, or excuse me, the, excuse me, the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. Well, guess what, man? I didn't see a whole lot of patriots that are out there walking around making sure that we have these weapons. Well, and if you really want to worry about the government, you need an F-16. You don't need a AR-15. No, I'm not. No, I'm serious when you think about it. I'm not joking, because that's one of the arguments made by right, that we need to be able to protect ourselves against the government. Well, look. I want you to pay attention to what he didn't say. He didn't say you'll never have to worry about protecting yourself from the government because we would never become tyrannical. Instead, he said, if you're worried about how to protect yourself from the government, there's nothing you can do because the arms that you would need, you don't have. Then look smugly at the camera while a room full of literally the government starts laughing. This clip right here. You don't need a AR-15. Is literally why the founding fathers wrote the second amendment because they didn't trust the federal government and they wanted to protect the people's ability to protect themselves against a room full of laughing idiots who feel that they can become tyrannical anytime they want and there would be nothing we could do about it except there's this whole thing called the national and state guards which as the heritage foundation does a great job of explaining 
This claim misunderstands the importance of the protective role of federalism, in which each state already has well-trained and well-equipped organized militias of their own that can be mobilized and used in tandem with armed civilians. These national and state guards are better equipped than the entire national militaries of many countries with their own fighter jets, tanks, heavy artillery, batteries, and special force units. And a handful of states even have their own naval militias. It is highly likely that should a tyrannical federal government attempt to impose its will with the might of the American military, these state-level military entities acting under the direction of the liberty-loving states' governments could be deployed as a meaningful countermeasure, just like the colonial governments mobilizing existing militias against the British Army during the American Revolution. Joe Biden's statements are nothing more than a bully tactic designed to scare people from even the thought of being able to fight back against a tyrannical government. And if you ask me, it is very, very, very unbecoming of a president to insinuate that the people who elected him to represent them can do nothing to stop him from enacting his tyranny on them. And the fact that he repeats this time and time again is just disgusting. And I think it makes him undeserving of his position as the president of the United States of America on this alone. Say what you want about which party the president belongs to. There's absolutely no reason a president of a country founded on the idea of freedom should be telling the people that fighting to protect this country from a tyrannical federal government is pointless because it's too powerful. The King of England said the same thing, and yet here we are. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.